In 2023, the Walt Disney Company famously celebrated their 100-year anniversary. Even though technically the company hadn't been around for that long, and was really more just the anniversary of Walt and Roy Disney getting into the animation business, if you really want to be precise. But either way, the point is that the company pulled out a lot of major stops in order to celebrate this landmark event, with two of the more notable things released in reference to this being the theatrical movie Wish and the seven-minute short Once Upon a Studio. And though actually quite different in nature, the most glaring difference between them may just be in the fact that one did a much better job of being a tribute to the Walt Disney Company than the other did. And today, I'd like to explain specifically why Once Upon a Studio works so well as a tribute while Wish didn't, and what it did right that Wish did wrong. And, as always, there will be spoilers for both of these ahead. So in case you haven't seen either of them yet, I would highly recommend coming back to this video after you have. Okay, so to try and start off as simply as possible, one of the best things to look at is how each of these two handle references. Because, simply put, Wish is not only a prime example of how a lot of beloved franchises have been using references since the mid-2010s, but also perfectly encapsulates how they've been doing them wrong. Which is that most of the references don't amount to anything beyond just being references. For example, is there any reason for a bear called John not to eat a deer named Bambi? No, that little bit of dialogue was put in just for people who would get what they were talking about. Or King Magnifico listing off wishes that sound suspiciously like the desires of characters in other Disney movies? Again, it amounts to nothing if you don't get the reference and just seem like ordinary inconsequential wishes otherwise. Though it could be argued that they do serve the purpose of showing just how far Magnifico has fallen, but once again, the individual wishes and therefore references themselves mean nothing to the narrative. Or Asha's seven friends being a reference to the seven dwarves from Snow White. And this one in particular ends up becoming a problem because unlike the seven dwarves, there being so many of them allows no time for most of them to have any individuality beyond superficial quirks. The point is, since there are seven characters, None of them really get a chance to stand out, even when they do have something to contribute to the plot. Honestly, they would have been better off giving her only two or three friends, since that way they would not only stand out from each other, but also have more narrative significance. Because what's important to remember about the Seven Dwarves was, they had a whole movie to establish their personalities and individual quirks. The Seven Teens, meanwhile, only get a few quick scenes before agreeing to help out at the climax. So once again, it would have heavily benefited their characters if there were less of them. And there are other examples I could bring up, but the point is that none of Wish's references to other Disney movies really amount to anything beyond just being references. And if a person doesn't get them, they seem odd and out of place. But it's not like that in Once Upon a Studio. Because here, most of the references work whether you've seen the movies they come from or not. 
like Flash holding up the elevator, Antonio's don't eat those moment, Scuttle cutting off Ariel with his terrible singing, Ichabod Crane nearly getting his head taken off by the ladder, the Cheshire Cat trolling Gaston, or Winnie the Pooh getting stuck in his portrait and his friends trying to pull him out. All of these things are still funny, whether you get the reference or not. Because the writers aren't relying on the fact that the audience knows what they're referring to, and instead everything that they are referencing is funny in the context of the short either way. Like Rapunzel knocking Ka out with the frying pan. That's still funny even if you don't know that that was her signature weapon. Or with Scar's line, I'm surrounded by idiots. His exasperation is coming from Ralph making a fool of himself, rather than saying it just because. And in this case, they even add an extra layer of humor to it, by him almost being hit by Mr. Toad on the magic carpet as he says it. Which is another thing that majorly benefits the short. The fact that it doesn't just rely on references either, and instead mix in original jokes and other moments together with them. Now, obviously this isn't to say that those in the know wouldn't have an easier time appreciating a lot of the things they put in, or have a deeper fondness for the short on the whole. My only point is that everything in Once Upon a Studio is put in for a reason, and therefore the references not only serve a purpose beyond just being a reference, but still work whether one actually gets them or not. But the other place where the two vary significantly is in respect and understanding for the Disney company. Because as I already got into in another video, which you can find a link in the description to, the problem with Wish is that it feels like it's trying to be a tribute to something it doesn't fully understand. Because simply put, it doesn't feel like a Disney movie. I mean, I know I said in my original review of the movie that it felt more like a Disney movie than some of their more recent efforts, which I sadly do still believe is true, but the point is that for a movie that tries to encapsulate everything the Disney company had been, it doesn't really do a good job at that. And in my video on A Few Issues Wish Had, I argued that this mainly came from the writers wanting to use Pixar's style of writing, but felt they couldn't, and the result was a messy mating of the two. And as I noted in the same video, in early drafts of the script, the movie felt a lot more Disney-like in nature, and the changes they made were ones more often associated with Pixar, so it seems they just couldn't help themselves. But the point is that Wish feels like it just takes a bunch of elements many associate with Disney, smoosh it all together, and assume that it would make for the perfect Disney tribute. The only problems were both that they forgot some of the most crucial aspects to what made Disney so beloved, as well as that it's a lot more complicated than that. And this was something that Once Upon a Studio understood, because I said it in my original video on the short, which you can also find a link in the description to, and I'll say it again now. If there is one thing Once Upon a Studio has going for it, it's that it both respects and understands Disney. Really, it's amazing how a seven minute short manages to capture the Disney magic much more effectively than an entire freaking movie. Because the thing is, everything is accounted for here. There are over 500 characters, and every single one of them is written perfectly. All of the gags suit them, whether it's a reference to their original work or not. And as I already spoke at length about in the aforementioned video, all the characters are animated in the style of their original movie. And honestly, if there was 
anything that showed just how much the writers of this short respected Disney, it would have to be that. Because in this day and age, it would have been so easy to just CGI everything and call it a day. But instead, they wanted to make it feel that these were really the same characters from their original movies, and therefore went to all that extra work, even banking heavily on 2D animation for the first time in over a decade in the process to achieve that effect. And this also extends to the fact that they didn't replace any voice actor that was still living, and even archived certain voice actors all to try and do right by the characters as much as possible. And the results might just be one of the most authentic crossovers between a group of animated characters ever. But the impressive animation doesn't just extend to the characters, but to the setting as well. Because Walt Disney was always about being innovative and pushing the boundaries of what was possible. And that's exactly what this short does. Because again, they could have easily just CGI'd all the backgrounds. But instead, they went to the work of actually animating the characters inside the real-life Roy E. Disney animation building. And even if the interaction is pretty limited, that's still a really impressive feat, especially with all the different animation designs going on at once on top of that. And let me just once again emphasize, all the backgrounds are real here. Nothing is CGI. The only corners they cut were most of the live-action props the characters interact with. But what also makes it such an effective tribute is that no favoritism is shown. This short celebrates the good, the bad, and the ugly of Disney's history all in equal measure. Because as the directors themselves explained, they understood that even Disney's weaker movies had their fans, and are still Disney movies after all, so they deserve to be part of the celebration, even if they aren't as well regarded. And they extended this even further by not letting the preferences of anybody, be it fans, the studio, Walt Disney, or even themselves, dictate who got focus or special treatment. Instead, everybody is on equal footing here and given proper respect, with anybody getting the chance to do something if the situation calls for it. And in doing that, it allows the short to be a true tribute to the Walt Disney Company, because it celebrates everything they've done, no matter how it's individually thought of overall. There's no shame or attempts to correct anything. It's simply celebrating Disney as it is. And as I already touched on before, Every detail is accounted for here. So many things going on in the backgrounds. Every line and action fitting their given characters perfectly. And even the imperfections of the animation on certain characters. It's all there and makes it feel that much more real. But perhaps the most important thing is that it doesn't forget Walt Disney himself. Because it may be a quick moment, but the fact that they actually took time to honor the man who started it all, and even going to the trouble of playing his favorite song in the background during that moment, just helps the short feel even more special. Especially because they even decided to animate Mickey based off the short they did, specifically because he was wearing a hat that he could take off when addressing his portrait as a show of respect. And even beyond that moment, you can just feel the love and respect the people making this short had for Walt Disney all throughout. Especially because in many ways, it's exactly how he would have done it. And it's unfortunate to say, 
but that same love and respect for Walt Disney is just not present in Wish. To put it another way, Wish feels like it's just going through the motions of being a tribute to the Walt Disney Company and desperately wants to tell its own story while borrowing bits and pieces from the Disney mythos. And once again, the results aren't great ones as far as trying to honor Disney goes. But with Once Upon a Studio, the love and care that went into it is very apparent, and the writer's singular goal that was to make both the perfect celebration and tribute to both Walt Disney and the millions of fans that love what he and others have created over the last hundred years. And it does that job so well that anybody, even people who've never watched a single Disney movie, could understand that they created something special here. To put it simply, when that dedication appears at the end of the short, you know they mean it because it was just that perfect as a tribute and ode to both Disney and the people who love it. And that's a feeling that Wish simply cannot evoke when it's time for its credits to roll. Okay, I think I've made my point with all of this. So now I'd like to hear your thoughts. Do you believe that Once Upon a Studio makes for a much better tribute to the Walt Disney Company than Wish did in part for the reasons I mentioned? Or do you believe I've got it all wrong? Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And please remember, you in no way have to agree with anything I said in this video if you don't want to. You are entitled to your own opinion, and if you think I got both Wish and Once Upon a Studio totally backwards, that's absolutely fine. And thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you all next time.